Make your mattress totally you during the Labor Day sale, now at Value City Furniture. Shop the latest mattress styles from Serta and Beautyrest, and take a simple rest test with one of our certified sleep experts to find your perfect mattress. Plus, this week at Value City Furniture, save up to 400 bucks off select mattresses, plus free box springs, pillows, and more with qualifying purchases, and free delivery plus 36 months no interest financing with your Value Plus credit card on mattress purchases $9.99 and up, only at Value City Furniture. Financing subject to credit approval. See store for details. What am I doing flying through space on a cheetah made of lightning? <laughs> it's a metaphor for Simple Mobile's blazing fast 4G LCE network. With Simple Mobile, you get this network and truly unlimited high-speed data for just 60 bucks a month. <laughs> if you want better wireless, the answer is simple. Available at Target, Best Buy, and other national retailers. Video typically streams at DVD quality. To get 4G LTE speed, you must have a 4G LTE capable device and 4G LTE SIM. Actual availability coverage and speed may vary. A month equals 30 days. Please refer always to the latest terms and conditions of service at SimpleMobile.com. Hi, and welcome to the show. I am so excited we'll be talking about... Eden Undone, and in the realm of speculative fiction, we've all asked the question, what if Eve said no? Where today's guest, co-host and contributor Anna Lindsay, actually took that uh, speculation to the test in her new book, Eden Undone, and we'll be talking about that in just a few moments. Stay tuned. You are listening to the best. The only, the only place to be on Tuesday night. That's right. You're listening to The Right Stop, and you're at the right place at the right time. From England to Canada, from Detroit to the Kokono, we are showcasing Christian authors worldwide, giving you tips, tools, techniques, and resources for you, the writer, to hone and perfect your craft. Tune in every Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time right here on WPJC 104.5. And your host, Parker J. Cole. Hi, and welcome back to the show. I'm so glad you are here with me. Like I said before the introduction of the show, we're going to be talking about something extremely speculative in Christian speculative fiction, which is what if Eve said no? So many of us know the story of about how Eve took of the fruit, and then when Adam took the fruit, mankind fell into sin. And so what if Eve said no? What if she did not listen to the serpent in the garden? What if she... Stuck by, stuck by her guns and didn't do that. Well, one of our authors today, Anna Lindsay, hailing all the way from the UK, decided to answer that question in her own way with her new book, Eden Undone. Now, this show is pre-recorded today, so we won't be taking any live calls or tweets today, but I'm really excited to have Anna on the line with us as we talk about her new book, Eden Undone. The book is available on Amazon.com or Amazon.com. Uh, in the UK uh, Amazon site as well. So you're going to definitely enjoy this book. This book has had revolutionary changes in some of the people's lives who have encountered it. And with Easter being very close in just a few weeks, we definitely want to look and maybe just ponder a little bit, what if Eve said no? We're going to go ahead, take a quick short break. And when we come back, we'll be talking to Anna Lindsay, author of Eden Undone. Don't go anywhere. More with Parker and her guests on the Right Stuff Radio Show. We'll be right back. Question. If you write a book, everybody will rush out to buy it. Obvious answer, no. If you were a celebrity or if you had a huge marketing budget, then maybe you can get a lot of exposure for your book. Another solution would be to check out joeytweets.com. JoeyTweets.com is a promotion and marketing service with access to over one-third of a million followers on Twitter. JoeyTweets.com has three packages available to fit any budget. That's J-O-E-Y-T-W-E-E-T-S.com. JoeyTweets.com. Get some serious exposure for your books. Hi. Is your book club in need of some fresh and exciting questions to ask club members and authors at your next book club meeting? Literacation, the book conversation game, is 70 thought-provoking questions to really get into an in-depth discussion about the books you and your club members are reading. These questions really get into the characters, the storyline, and into the author's head. These questions may just give you a whole new way to get into a new conversation, a literacation. Literacations is also a great set of tools for bloggers, interviewers, and authors to use a discussion question. Are you ready to get lit? Please visit our website at litversations.com 
L I T V E R S A T I O N dot com. And please like our Facebook page at Simply Said Reading Accessories. Thank you. Hi, and welcome back to the show. You're listening to The Right Stuff here on WP. 4.5. I am so glad you are here with me. We are having, we are going to have us a wonderful time talking to author Anna Lindsay. She is the author of the book Eden Undone. And the basic premise, which is a huge premise, is what if Eve said no? And without further ado, I want to introduce our guest co-host and contributor for the evening, Anna Lindsay. Anna, how are you doing today? Be here. And I am so excited to have you on. This uh, broadcast has been a long time coming, and I'm so excited to have you on because you took such a wonderful idea. It's a wonderful premise, and you put it and package it in the book, and I can't wait to tell our audience and our listeners about it. So once again, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us on the show today. My pleasure. Well, you know, Anna, before we start, I want people to know a little bit about you. So go ahead and tell us who you are in your own words. <laughs> okay, so I think that. Um, right, uh, what do you want to know? I, I'm English, well, more or less English, as you can probably tell from my accent. When I say more or less, I mean actually rather Heinz's 57 varieties, which is an English expression to mean a sort of a, a bit of a melting pot. I, I'm half English, half Swiss, I was born in Belgium, I grew up in Italy, so all these influences have probably, you know, shaped who I am today. I think a lot of us can really attest to how the different, our backgrounds really shape who we are today, especially as writers. We have different things and events that happen to us that help shape us into the people we are, and it's no different from you, even though you're from the UK and I'm from the US, guess what, we had a lot of things happen in our lives that shape us into people that we are. And so what are, if you were going to tell us a little bit about who was one of the people or what was one of the big events in your life that shaped who you are today, what would be that one person or that one event? Oh, good grief. Um, I don't really know how to answer that one. I suppose a huge influence on me was growing up with C.S. Lewis's Narnia books. Um, which I've, which I, as a child, I read and reread too many times to count. Um, mm-hmm. Whether that was the biggest influence on me, I, I suppose it it depends when you're asking and in what context. Um, uh-huh. My mother was a huge influence on me. Uh, God was a huge influence on me. Uh-huh. Um, I suppose all the little things that happen to you which add up to the holistic whole of a person. As you were saying, right. it's the things which shape us, which when we were growing up, the, the way we look at the world, the way we've experienced the world. Um, I wrote Eden Undone on the back of some years which were both wonderful but also very challenging and Mm -hmm. some of that shaped the book itself um, some of those experiences for good and for bad Um, so yes does that answer your question well it does answer my question because like you said it's kind of it is kind of I guess a hard question to ask because it's not always one singular event. It's always a little bitty stuff that adds up to that trail, kind of like Hansel and Gretel when they're uh, trying to find their way home. They're following the little breadcrumbs, you know. And so I totally understand exactly where you're coming from. And Eden Undone, like I said, for those of you listening, is available on Amazon.com. It's also in a, a hard copy. You want to get a hard copy of that book, too. And this book, like I said, is explores the question, what if Eve said no? But before we get into the actual book itself, I want to kind of get some background on it, Anna. Um, when you were writing Eden Undone, um, where did the idea come from? What made you say, you know what, I want to work on Eden Undone? Where did the idea come from? Well, you're going to laugh, but the idea came, I was standing in my mom's kitchen, and I can't remember what we were talking about, but I suddenly hmm. thought, you know, if you assume that Genesis is literal and the Bible is literal, then you know what would have happened if Eve had said no? And I thought, gosh, I wonder why I haven't thought of that before. I mm-hmm. wonder what 
had written about it, you know, in terms of fiction or, or thing. So I did what everybody does. I went online to look for all these books that had been written about this obvious question. Because, uh-huh. thought, well, you've got the whole scope of, you know, history, the universe to play with. <laughs> and actually, I couldn't find anything. So then I had to write it because nobody else had written it. Uh, I mean, the closest I found was uh, Perilandra by, by C.S. Lewis, but he just takes the attitude of, you know, the the the, the Eve character in his book says no, and that's it. Temptation and evil are vanquished forever from Perilandra. Um, and when I was thinking about it, I thought, well, I'm not sure that what the Bible tells me about evil or what my own experience of evil is, that evil would simply give up, crawl away, and never be heard from again. So what mm. would happen then? And like I said, since nobody else had written it, I had to write it. I think that shows a definite call. That's why sometimes, well, that's why I I particularly consider my writing ministry. And I can tell when sometimes other authors have that same experience where they see this is a ministry. It's, yes, it's also entertaining. We also with the books that we write, but sometimes there are certain books and certain novels that we write call a ministry, and I'm excited yeah. to see how uh, people have responded to Eden Undone later on in the broadcast. So you're working on Eden Undone, and you're saying, you know what, no one has done this before. Did you find it a little daunting to be one of the first to tackle this type of topic? That never occurred to me. Oh, it never did? I- <laughs> It, it, it was simply, you know, such an obvious story that needed to be told. Um, mm-hmm. So it never crossed my mind to be daunted. It was just sort of, I mean, the the, the, the daunting thing was understanding how a pre-fall world would work, you know, in practicalities. Mm-hmm. But I didn't think of it as daunting, merely as, you know, this was a challenge I needed to get under the skin of to understand, because unless I could understand it, I couldn't write about it. Um, mm. So that was challenging, but I wouldn't say it was daunting. It was just sort of, you know, me pacing around a lot and saying, but, 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 you know, if if if, you know, they, they didn't eat meat because there was no death, then you know, what did the carnivores eat? Okay. You know, questions like that, which I was trying, I had to work out for myself before <laughs> I could step into the universe to describe it. I like that. I like that. You know, it, I like how you said, never crossed your mind. But there are other aspects of writing. I think we all experience this just as writers when you're writing something, you know, very heavy or you write something very light. Just kind of things happen that you all expect to make sure you have the right words or the right framework and how you want to get that thought across. So I can definitely appreciate that aspect of your writing. And so we are you you have this idea, no one has written it, you're writing it down. But I know when we talked before the show, you had some things happen in your life that led had a huge impact on getting this book done. And one of the things was that you were taking care of a loved one during this time. Do you can go ahead and tell us a little bit about it. Tell us as much as you Tell us the whole nitty gritty, but tell as much as you want about what was going on during the time you were writing Eden Undone. Yes, absolutely. Oh, I mentioned that there were things going on in my life at the time of writing it, and uh, some of the things that were going on was uh, were that I was caring for my mother, um, and I've been ill myself for several years, um, uh, as a consequence of going back to work with flu once too often and your body going on strike. So very boring. But what it meant was that um, when I was caring for mum, I had, I believe God gave me supernatural strength and ability to do that. But the moment she would go to bed, I would just be completely wiped out. Um, so, you know, to the extent of, you know, when I went up to my room or, or the office, I'd be sometimes had to sort of crawl up the stairs on my hands and knees because I just couldn't physically actually stand up and walk up them. So that was, I was very conscious of God's uh, power and Holy Spirit just giving me the strength I needed to be there. And, I, you know, the time with my mum 
was a time I wouldn't swap for all the world. It was such a precious time. Um, and, yeah, it was, it's something I will always be able to cherish in my, my, my heart and for the rest of my life. Um, at the same time, um, there were also some challenging aspects. There were some individuals, uh, basically abusers, who um, were made life rather unpleasant mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. for me and um, survived. And, of course, you know, the way God works is that he can turn even the worst things into good. And so it meant that I had, I suppose, models for what abusers look like, mm-hmm. you know, for how they act, for how they think, for, for the alternate realities they create for themselves in which, you know, they anything they do is justified because it's not fair on them. So it's, you know, uh, somebody's going to have to pay. Um, and they are unable to take responsibility for what they themselves have done. Um, and so whatever they do and the way, you know, abuse escalates. Um, and the, that, that pattern. And that's something which if I hadn't had that inside knowledge, I suppose, Mm-hmm. I would not have been able to bring to the uglier characters in the book. Um, okay. It, you know, if, if you if you haven't read, essentially, it's a bully. Doesn't matter mm. how powerful it is, it boils down to it's a bully, and the bully is something small. Mm. So even if the, the the abuse is incredibly powerful, as we term power. In essence, they're shrunk, they're shriveled, um, because they can only destroy, they can't create, they can't bring goodness. Um, So those joy of having that time with my mum, that love, um, and all the way through to the the ugliness of of dealing with these individuals, meant that those, that coloured Eden Undan, I suppose, coloured the characters, allowed them to be Mm -hmm. three-dimensional. Yeah. I hear you there, and I can tell, you know, just from the restraint of your story, there's a lot that going there that um, you probably aren't saying. I'm glad, because sometimes we don't always have to tell it, but we can just tell, you know what, remember, if that we're writers and as writers you may end up in a story <laughs> that's what you know they have those mugs and those t-shirts you know be careful as I'm a writer and you may end up in the story but then sometimes writing in and of itself can be such a healing process and like you said just like you said bullies they may have you know maybe powerfully to abuse you in some way but at the end of the day they just shrink they're shriveled and they're just going to be cast away eventually so it doesn't matter how powerful evil seems evil will not always uh, win the day. And that's something else that comes out just in our own life when we recognize that Satan may have um, power here and he may be doing things here, but at the end of the day, he will be destroyed. And that's something we yeah. can all count on. And I think that, yes, what you're reflecting even in the story, Eden Undone, and we're going to get to it in just a few moments. What I want to do now is take a quick short break. And we are talking to Anna Lindsay. She is the author of the book, Eden Undone, which simply asks a question, what if Eve said no? We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break. When we come back, we'll be delving more into Eden Undone. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. More with Parker and her guest on the Right Stuff Radio Show. We'll be right back. Authors, are you looking for a new way to get your book in the hands of new audience of targeted buyers? Then a virtual book tour is for you. Right now, virtual book tours is an excellent opportunity in who you are as an author. Launching your book is very important. A virtual book tour will connect you with readers. We at WNL, we specialize in book tours, book blasts, radio tours, cover reveals, and Facebook chat. Promoting and marketing your book is what we do. Online publicity, the exposure and the publicity is what you need. 
Let us help you reach new readers and a new audience. We take care of everything so you don't have to. We set up the tour for you. We connect you with bloggers to advertise your book by way of interviews, guest posts, and reviews. If you are an author of a newly published book, have an upcoming release, or just want to give a previously published book new life, a virtual book tour is your answer. Check our tours out at www.wnlbooktours.com. Visit me on Facebook. I am the owner, Paulette Harper. Have you read the latest issue of SORMAG Digital, the award-winning literary magazine for multicultural readers and writers? SORMAG Digital is available quarterly and showcases interviews with the best authors in multicultural literature. SORMAG Digital features craft and business articles for those interested in writing. If you're looking for a good book, check out our book reviews on what's hot in multicultural literature. For writers looking for new readers to get in front of, SORMAG Digital is the perfect place to introduce your book. We offer advertising spaces that fit your promotional budget. Get your free subscription on SORMAG.com or order a print issue on MAGCloud.com. If you would like more information about SORMAG Digital, check us out on SORMAG.com or contact us at SORMAG at Yahoo.com. SORMAG Digital is the magazine for multicultural readers and writers. Hi, welcome back to the show. You're listening to The Right Stuff here on WPJC 104.0. Glad you are able to join me for this edition of The Right Stuff. We are talking today to Anna Lindsay. She is the author of the book, Eden Undone, which is available on Amazon.com, and it's also available on Amazon's UK site, as well as in paperback. So you can go ahead and get a hard copy of the book as well. What I'm really excited about this book is that Anna takes a very bold premise what if Eve said no? And as far as we know, it hasn't really been done before, this question about what if Eve said no. I know we have all speculated about it, whether seriously or whether and jokingly. You know, for some of us, us females, we say, you know, if Eve had said no, we wouldn't have to worry about that time of the month <laughs> and all that kind of stuff and the, the, the pain in childbirth and all that. But actually, this is such an important topic, I think, because Easter is coming. And we need to remember that because mankind fell into sin, Jesus could save us from our sins. But what if Eve said no the first time? What would have happened then? And that's one thing I want to talk about today with my wonderful guest co-host, Anna Lindsay. Anna, once again, thanks for being with us on the show. You know, I want to dig into um, Eden Undone right now. I already said what the premise is, but go ahead. It's kind of set up for this uh, book. So what are some of the things going on um, in the book? Do we still have the same serpent in the garden? Do we still have Adam? I mean, what's what's some of the things going yes. on? I used, kind of set it up for I, I used Genesis as my, as my guide. I simply went behind the scenes. So okay. when we read Genesis, the story of the fall is basically dealt with in a few lines. And I sat and I thought, you know, apart from, you know, what if Eve had said no, what is it that, you know, after the fall led them from paradise to murder in a single generation? What's going on there? You know, mm. how, how did the fall happen in the first place? And then mm. what was going on that, you know, they didn't start calling on the name of the Lord Till years later, you know, that's some sulk and what was going on behind the scenes that inspired the story, that allowed me to go in and see it from the, on the ground, not just written like a news excerpt or, you know, a news article of a few lines covering a huge great event and then moving on to the next thing, but actually going into the reality of the story itself, what it might have felt like, what it might have looked like, um, and how God's character shines through that. So, mm -hmm. you know, without giving uh, too much away, uh, yes, to of evil, and thought, well, evil wouldn't simply give up if Eve had said no. So eventually, somebody would have fallen. But by that stage, it wouldn't have been the whole of humanity and therefore the whole of creation. It would have mm -hmm. been a part of them. So you'd have these two populations, the fallen and the unfallen. And the unfallen, by definition, still carry God's heart. So mm -hmm. how are they going to interact with the fallen? And what can we learn about God and about God's grace and about God's love through that interaction? Um, so, and, you know, 
again, exploring the characters. I mean, this is one of the things which amazes me about the Bible is if it were somebody just writing some a story for the Bible, then, you know, life ever, happily ever after, then mm-hmm. they would have made they would have done it the easy way you know this yeah. came murdering uh, abel they they might not have mentioned other things but they did so it was working out how and why and using what was written in genesis to help me understand the characters help me understand what their strengths might have been what their weaknesses might have been that might have been played on um what was it about their characters that made them react the way they did. Mm-hmm. Because if you're, I don't know, a person who's um, always, you know, certain of um, your position, you're not, you don't have that, that sense of insecurity which makes you react with jealousy. Mm. Because if you, there is no fear in love. So if you are secure in that love, then you, uh, and you really grasp that love, then you have no need for jealousy. So mm. what is it in your character that makes you insecure? Um, does that answer your uh, question? Yeah, it does. I think you also hit a very interesting part because you're looking into the Bible as we know, as we have it, because we don't have this, you know, parallel uh, universe happening <laughs> where Eve didn't say uh, no. But you kind of look into the Bible to get your inspiration, which I think is uh, quite admirable. And then you just, you know, use your own greater creative license to just build the story. And one thing that I would love to do is have you read an excerpt from Eden Undone, and I'll tell you why I like you to read an excerpt from it. First of all, I love British accents, and I think they're the coolest <laughs> accents in the entire world. You know, there's one reason why I want you to read an excerpt from Eden Undone, too. And then I want to read the, the part where Adam meets Eve and we, where he meets her, and just how it, interesting it is because, you know, Adam's in the world by himself at first, you know, and he has all these animals, and but when he sees Eve, it changes everything. It's a huge game changer. And it kind of just, I really just want to hear that part of your story. So go ahead to excerpt Eden Undone. Absolutely. And you're right, it is like, hmm. you know, how they react. So I'm going to read, and each of the chapters starts with, I'm going to let your listeners into a secret. They start, it, each chapter starts with a Bible verse. But of course, because it's an alternate uh, timeline and alternate story, the names of the book, uh, books of the Bible have been changed, and you can find the sort of index in the back for what the actual, but I think p- uh, listeners will guess where this actually comes from. So, from the book of the beginning, chapter 2. So the Lord God caused the man to, while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. Adam sat up and rubbed his eyes. His left side, the side of his heart, felt refreshed somehow, as though the fibres of his being had been stronger even than before, and lighter somehow too. As though a burden he'd never previously noticed that he carried had suddenly become shared and the load reduced so that he could breathe in God's radiance even more deeply than before. He almost wondered at that, but then, then he saw her. Had Adam stopped to think about what he would have expected her to be like, more or less, apart from the gentles, just as so many of the animals he'd just named were to their mates. Well, maybe a little smaller than him. Or covered in plumage, perhaps, radically different in colouring from him, like some of the birds. And then again, he wasn't a bird. So perhaps she wouldn't be covered in feathers either, even pretty ones. Horns? He'd noticed that some of the beasts only had horns on one gender. 
on the males. And he double-checked by patting his own head. Horns were something he didn't have, not even little tiny ones, let alone the gloriously proud headpieces sported by some of the creatures. Oh, well, she'd probably pretty, be pretty much like him, he'd have guessed. Not like this. Similar, yes, sort of. Two arms, two legs, one head. Similar arrangement of eyes, nose, and mouth. Oh, what a beautiful mouth. But, but where his own sides were lean, muscular, plain, she had curves. Glorious curves, beautiful curves, wonderful curves. Curves he just knew would fit. Where he was lean, she was lithe. Where he was tall, she was slender. Where his torso was smooth, rippled only with muscles, she had two perfectly shaped breasts. Where his hair was short, dark, and densely curled, hers was long, so oh, long, and silken, and oh, so beautiful. Where He suddenly realized that he was sitting there with his jaw hanging open and scrambled up to meet her. And in that instant, their eyes met, and she laughed with delight musical lilting laughter he'd ever heard, silver notes pealing on golden air. His heart felt as though it had leapt into his throat, while simultaneously playing percussion in his chest. Oh. Oh. Not a replica of him, not a rival. No. This, this she was part of him, his perfect complement, as he was hers. Every fibre of his being knew now what glory had meant. This she was his partner, bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh, perfect in her own right, as he was in his. Oh, yes. Wow. Wow. What a beautiful, beautiful excerpt. And I'm going to let you know right now, Anna, you can read the phone book anytime to me. I just want to let you know that right now. You can read the old-fashioned phone book to me anytime. What a beautiful excerpt from Eden Undone. And let our listeners know that you can get a copy of Eden Undone today on Amazon.com, Amazon UK, and also get a hard copy of that as well. One thing about Eden Undone is like any novel you've ever read because it really delves into the question what if Eve said no and we just enjoyed a wonderful excerpt from Anna Lindsay's book Eden Undone so go ahead and get a copy come back more with Anna Lindsay and Eden Undone don't go anywhere more with Parker and her guest on the Right Stuff radio show we'll be right back Engaging the culture's imagination through speculative fiction, the Untold Podcast produces audio fiction from a Christian worldview. Find us over at untoldpodcast.com, where we partner with authors to tell science fiction, fantasy, supernatural, and horror stories. Find links at untoldpodcast.com to subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, and a variety of other platforms. Each month we produce high-quality audio fiction that's free to download and free to listen. Our submissions are open, and we're always looking to add another great story to over 24 hours of narrative entertainment. Find all of our audio fiction over at www.untoldpodcast.com. Question. If you write a book, everybody will rush out to buy it. Obvious answer, no. If you were a celebrity or if you had a huge marketing budget, then maybe you can get a lot of exposure for your book. Another solution would be to check out joeytweets.com. JoeyTweets.com is a promotion and marketing service with access to over one-third of a million followers on Twitter. JoeyTweets.com has three packages available to fit any budget. That's J-O-E-Y-T-W-E-E-T-S.com. JoeyTweets.com. Get some serious exposure for your books. 
Have you read the latest issue of SORMAG Digital, the award-winning literary magazine for multicultural readers and writers? SORMAG Digital is available quarterly and showcases interviews with the best authors in multicultural literature. SORMAG Digital features craft and business articles for those interested in writing. If you're looking for a good book, check out our book reviews on what's hot in multicultural literature. For writers looking for new readers to get in front of, SORMAG Digital is the perfect place to introduce your book. We offer advertising spaces that fit your promotional budget. Get your free subscription on SORMAG.com or order a print issue on MAGCloud.com. If you would like more information about SORMAG Digital, check us out on SORMAG.com or contact us at SORMAG at Yahoo.com. SORMAG Digital is the magazine for multicultural readers and writers. Hi, and welcome back to the show. You're listening to The Right Stuff here on WPJC 104.5. We are having such a great time with my guest co-host and contributor today, Anna Lindsay, hailing all the way from the UK. You know, The Right Stuff is all about showcasing Christian authors worldwide. So for wherever you are, if you want to be on The Right Stuff, just contact me. You know how to do it. Hit me on Facebook. Hit my email address, rightstuffradio at gmail.com. Hit me on Twitter. I don't care. If you want to be showcased on The Right Stuff and you are a few continents away or a few hours away, let me know. I would love to have you on the show. Anna's been telling us a lot about book, Eden Undone, and she just finished reading a wonderful excerpt about when Adam met Eve in her book, and so I'm really excited to delve further into Eden Undone. You know, Anna, one of the things I want to ask you about regarding Eden Undone has been the risk from readers, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about that response. Well, it's been wonderful. Um, I'm, there's been so many readers who, Christian readers, who say that reading it has renewed their relationship with God, with Jesus. It's refreshed them. It's re-inspired them. Um, And that's absolutely wonderful when that happens. The thing that I get really excited about have been the encounters with non-Christians. A a few things like that have happened where, for example, um, a Muslim lady that I know is now a Christian. Um, After having read Eden Undone, and then on the basis of that, um, we'd been talking and she'd been complaining about the sciatica. And because I knew that she knew that I was a Christian, because she'd read Eden Undone, she'd bought Eden Undone, I offered to pray for her. And she let me. So I just prayed for her in the name of Jesus. And uh, God healed her sciatica. Mm. Uh, in, and on the basis of that, um, she started becoming more and more interested in this God who has takes an active part in our lives um, and is now a Christian. Um, so things like that, which just, are wonderful for me. Uh, uh, somebody who has uh, died in the wall, atheist, who, you know, said, well, after he read it, um, and afterwards said, well, you know, I'm not a Christian, but I'm less allergic to the idea than I was. Uh, hmm. So things like that make me incredibly excited. There was, uh, when I was uh, in the States on a book tour in uh, a few months ago, sitting next on the flight back from uh, Washington to, I can't remember where, where the uh, intermediate stop was, I found myself sitting next to a young man. Now, he was in one of the, uh, he was the lesbian gay uh, representative of a very, in his words, a very left-wing Washington think tank. Mm. So pretty much, you know, if you were working at the demographic for people likely to enjoy Eden Undone, he would, I'm guessing, probably have been at the other end of the scale of people least likely to be interested. But we, and he said, you know, may I have a look at the book? So I handed him a copy, and that was it. I didn't see him for the rest of the, the trip, in the sense he was sitting next to me, but he had his nose buried in the book. And when we landed, he said, I've got to get this book. Hmm. And I just love that. I love that fact that it's sufficiently light that, you know, an eight-year-old has
has read it and enjoyed it. And yet wow. it sticks, uh, and, and the oldest that I know of was 95 when they read it, so you know, quite a big age rate, but that it because it's people who would ordinarily consider themselves to be allergic to the idea of you know, a Christian book would actually read it and find that their lives are transformed by it. And that I find so exciting. You know, mm. I love hearing from Christians that when they've been touched by it, when God's spoken to them through it, when they've had their relationship with him just renewed and reinvigorated. But I have even more joy when I hear about people who might not otherwise have come and joy. Yes, it takes a sort of um, uh, side road of saying, you know, what if Eva said no? But essentially, it's a literal retelling of Genesis. So it has the gospel message. But because it's, well, you, you heard from the chapter that I wrote, it takes us behind the scenes. It We get to see the people, how they feel that, that sense of loss at how easy it was to throw away that perfect relationship and how they are left yearning for that restoration of relationship, mm-hmm. how they are touched by God's grace, how they've laughed out loud at some of the bits. Um, you know, because it's a, what did he say? What was it actually like? So, you know, from belly buttons to, uh, you know, meeting Eve for the first time, some of these things have a lot of humor. Yes, there are some darker things happening, but it's tempered. It's not, it's, it's a very gentle story. And God's used it to reach people, and I love that. I like how you say all those things, how the book has had such a huge effect. And one of the things that I remember in earlier in the broadcast, what you said is that the Lord gave you supernatural power to write this story because you will be taking care of your mom and then you have to write the story. And we talked before. And just to see that that's what's given to you, poured into you to write this story because it has such a huge meaning. And perhaps um, more than just wondering what if Eve said no, is knowing that God is quite aware of everything that goes on in our lives and that he is a very active part of that. I know some people lose faith because they think, yeah. well, God sees all this happening. Why won't he do anything? You know, And they, he sees the pain. He sees the agony. Why won't he just stop it? And there are a lot yeah. of people who feel that way. I know even Christians sometimes when a uh, catastrophe or calamity happens personally or on a global scale, you kind of go like, God, where are you? Why aren't you here? And he's like, yeah. I'm very much here. Matter of fact, yeah. I have never left, you know. Yeah. And I like how, you know, you use that aspect of the Lord to let people know that I'm here. You know, I'm just not yeah. so far away that you can't reach me. And I'm not so beneath you that you can't get a hold of me. I am right here. I'm right next to you. And that's why yeah. he said, behold, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. That's what he says. And so I really like how you take that aspect of this book. And yeah, you talk about the speculative part, whether he said no, but the greater thing is, and knowing that yeah. he is here is a huge comfort to us. You know, under, you know what I mean? Annie, want to add to that? Uh, absolutely, because in this fallen world, bad things happen. And, you know, one of the most beautiful uh, characters in the book, things don't go the way we feel they should. And that's the responsibility of abuse free will, and it causes untold suffering, you know, not just for those directly in the path in terms of Adam and Eve, of course, or, or mm-hmm. in, in our Bible as opposed to Eden Undone. You know, the consequences of the fall resonate through the ages because, because of what they did, the whole mm-hmm. of creation is fallen. So you have the suffering, and I think you're absolutely right. It's the almost instinctive reaction when we see suffering of crying out and saying, God help, why aren't mm-hmm. you doing so? Why aren't you overturning this evil? And, you know, if if I were God, 
I would step in and say, right, I'm here, you know, I know what's best for everybody, and I'm not going to let bad things happen. Um, and, in fact, I'm not going to let anybody do anything that's bad, because mm. I'm God and I love you. But what mm. I'd end up with is I would end up with slaves or robots, maybe. Because if I am... It's, it's such a difficult topic, isn't it? It's a topic of free will. Yeah. Basically, if I uh, say that there are no consequences for anything that anybody does, then I've also removed free will. Um, him being there and suffering with us mm-hmm. when he sees that evil that's happening to us, whether that's something which is um, directly personally directed you know somebody killing somebody is, is pretty direct or something you know the, the thousands who died with the tsunami mm-hmm. um, and you say well that's you know if, if how can God be a loving God if he allows people to die like that and going well um, you know it doesn't it's not that he's not a loving God but we've uh, there, there are all sorts of factors we've contributed to quite apart yeah. from the original sin which you know made the world the planet and an easy uh, unquiet planet with earthquakes and with tsunamis um, but if we hadn't squeezed if, if our greed for land and profits um, mm-hmm. hadn't squeezed the poor people onto the margins of the land uh, where instead of being able to build sturdier houses higher up and higher ground, then perhaps there wouldn't have been all those fatalities um, because they would have been living on higher ground which the multinationals have you know, taken to build their luxury hotels. Yeah. That's a very simplistic answer, but basically, yes, I be- absolutely believe that God is there and that we can cry out to him and he will always hear. And sometimes we will hear his answer and sometimes we won't. Mm-hmm. Um, not because God doesn't answer, but because we don't always have the ears to hear. Um whether that's because we're so consumed with our suffering that we can't find that stillness to hear his voice or for whatever other reason. Um, but he never stops loving us. If he'd, if he'd stopped loving us, then there would have been no need for Jesus. Mm. What a way to say that. What a way to yeah. say that. And I can't think of um, a really good answer because it's not a easy answer and I don't even pretend to know I just you know what I, what I'm learning to do after I get is trust the Lord in everything through the good the bad the sickness the health and I've been definitely dealing with that you know as most of our uh, listeners know my sister had ovarian cancer and um, learning how to trust God when you see a loved one going through so much pain and you see a loved yeah. one going through it because I will probably be able to handle it better it was just me but I was looking yeah. at my twin sister and I'm like, you know, I, I won't lie. I had those questions of faith, like, why does she have to go through this? And I didn't yeah. realize until then um, how, I guess, inoculated I was with a lot of things because I hadn't had that serious, you know, um, yeah. crisis of faith. But when it came to my twin sister and seeing her having to go through so much and you're looking like, good Lord, why, you know? But I think that's what kind of the Eden undone is that God is a character in the sense that he's He's here, he's there. And I appreciate that about your book. And what I want to do, we only got about 10 minutes left. It always goes so quickly. Every time we have a great time on the show, it always goes so quickly. So I want people to know, what are you working on next? Uh, good question. I'm not actually uh, working on anything. I'm not writing anything at the moment. Um, Mm -hmm. I am very slowly um, working on an audio version of Eden Undone, and I'm also 
is very slowly working on an Italian translation of Eden Undone. Um, but that's about the extent of things. I've been dealing with a, a whole lot of other stuff recently. Um, but So that's pretty much where I'm at. If people want to get a hold of you, where can they find you online? Um, well, there's there's two ways. You can either go to um, evenundone.com, which is the website um, that I'm not very good at, at keeping up with it. However, if you message me on there, it will reach me. Um, you can find Eden Undone on Facebook. Um, and um, you can also um, email me. Um, I'm just trying to... It's an email that I don't... It, it gets feeds into my um, normal email address. Oh, what the heck. Um, Actually, just find me on on Eden on, on Facebook. Um, yes, I hope you'll be able to edit this bit out in a moment. Um, <laughs> I I think it's Eden dot undone dot contact at gmail dot com, but I need to check that. So don't put this on the air um, until I've checked that, please. And then I'll I'll look that up right now while we're speaking. So please delete this bit. Um, <laughs> Uh, yes. So come back to that in, in a second when I uh, say uh, I'll, I'll give a heads up of. Um, okay. Well, no. Uh, basically, if people want to get hold of you, they can just get a hold of EdenUndone.com. Maybe that's the best way to get a hold of you. And I think uh, that makes sense because so much of what your ministry is currently right now, before the Lord gives you something else to work on, is Eden Undone. And I'm really excited to. Can't wait till the audiobook comes out because audiobooks is actually one of those uh, uh, and one of those places where you have surprise returns on investment, like you work on your audiobook, and then a lot of people listen to audiobooks now while they're going to work, while they're at the gym, while they're working out, you know, all that type of thing. So I'm really excited to see how Eden Undone uh, plays well in the audiobook world. Well, you know, we're at that time of our show where we're getting ready to close, and I always want to encourage those authors out there who God has given the gift to write, to write. And I want you to speak to the author today in the couple minutes that we have left. I want you to speak to those uh, those authors in our audience who God has given the gift to write but hasn't picked up the pen. Do. If you feel that God's given you a story, then start writing and and have fun with it. Joy, fall in love with your characters. Enjoy reading what you've written. Put yourself in that universe where your characters are living. Look around you and just breathe in the smells and look at the sights and listen to the sounds and then write that down. Talk, meet your characters in your mind and then write about them. Um, get your, and then, and then once you've written, don't worry at your first draft if you've got a few spelling mistakes. But I would say if you're not used to writing, um, to then get it checked over by somebody who can correct um, those those you know spelling mistakes, etc. Because it might be a glorious story, but if you haven't checked those basic things, then it can be a distraction from the beauty which is in your story. So how do I get out of it? Um, so yes, I would say that that was, uh, would be my, my advice. Um, does I really appreciate Anna. I really appreciate that because I like how you said, talk to God, talk to God about it. And I think sometimes we're so much of artists that we forget that the Lord gave us this gift to write, to paint, to, sing, to play, whatever it is, wherever the art He gave it to us. And sometimes we to talk to the Lord about it. We just say, "Well, I'm just going to go ahead and do my thing." And work. I'm glad that you said that. And I think that's a wonderful advice to end the show on today. So, Anna, once again, calling all the way from the UK. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being with us on the show today. My pleasure. And people can also contact me 
uh, via my email, which is eden.undone.contact at gmail.com, and that will go directly to me. So that's eden.undone.contact at gmail.com. And I would love to hear from you when you've read it. Get in touch with me. Tell me how God's used it in your life. Tell me about how you are using it to bless others. Uh, and, yes, let me know. Thank you. And we just had a wonderful conversation with Anna Lindsay from the UK. She is author of the book Eden Undone, which is available on Amazon.com as well as Amazon UK store. Let me tell you, one thing that I really enjoyed about listening to Anna's story was the fact that the God gave her this supernatural power to write this story. She talked about it earlier on in the broadcast, and even when we talked about it before the show. I was just so moved by that because it really lets me know that God does care about what we write, and he wants to be the center of what we write. For those of you out there who have not picked up the pen to write, what are you waiting for? God has given you the gift to write. God has given you the ability to write. Go ahead and write stuff. Thank you so much for joining me for this edition of The Right Stuff. I'm Queen of Tuesday Nights, Parker J., and you have a wonderful, absolutely glorious, blessed day. Thank you for joining us for this edition of The Right Stuff. Follow Parker online at parkerjcole.com. To hear this show and other shows, visit the show archive at therightstuffradio.wordpress.com. We'll be back same time next week, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Experience a new way to shop at Value City Furniture. With made-to-mix furniture, you can now easily mix and unmatch styles to create a space that's totally you. So long, Matchy Matchy. It's time to mix it up and make it you. And now, hurry to Value City Furniture for our Labor Day sale and get free delivery plus 36 months no interest financing on your Value Plus credit card when you spend $19.99 and up. Plus, shop this week and save big on select bedrooms, dining rooms, reclining groups, and more during the Labor Day sale at Value City Furniture. Financing subject to credit approval. See store for details. Experience a new way to shop at Value City Furniture. With made-to-mix furniture, you can now easily mix and unmatch styles to create a space that's totally you. So long, Matchy Matchy. It's time to mix it up and make it you. And now, hurry to Value City Furniture for our Labor Day sale and get free delivery plus 36 months no interest financing on your Value Plus credit card when you spend $19.99 and up. Plus, shop this week and save big on select bedrooms, dining rooms, reclining groups, and more during the Labor Day sale at Value City Furniture. Financing subject to credit approval. See store for details.